You can't like diddle around on your computer. I want to diddle your computer and also steal your action figures while I'm here. Hey, I got the same artwork hanging up downstairs. And that shit's not a one-of-a-kind piece of art. Cheap bastards. Oh, hey. He has like little... Little... Is that a note? What is that? That's something. Yeah, it is a sticky note. What's the problem? Log on. I don't know how to grab the sticky note. I want to grab the sticky note, goddammit. Oh, apparently I did. <laughs> is it number two? I don't know what note I just picked up. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. I don't remember if I've read that one before. Take saturated... Okay, this one doesn't sound familiar. Take saturated fats and high fructose corn syrups, which poison us, and soy, which has been known to... I don't know, that one sounds familiar now. Today, Abstergo Templar frauds has given themselves to base practices and claim wrongly that man and woman are delicate and sensible and feeling creatures in and of themselves, and therefore deserves satiety, satiety? and comfort and mindlessness in the presence of pleasure. Nothing could be sicker, falser, disgusting, lying bastards. Good note, my man. Good note. Well worth the read. Alrighty, time to abuse the shit out of your animus. Um, what am I doing? Pressing B. Now, you need to bypass the core to find the data inside. Once you reach it, your communicator will download it automatically. You need to find your way around the core to reach the data inside. What? <laughs> now, I guess I should look at the tutorial, probably, huh? Uh, infinite loop around the sphere. Um, blocker. Possibly. Ability for infinite loop player avatar. Once your data moves in a specific direction, it will continue moving until it reaches an obstacle. The teleporter blocks are in pairs. When your data passes through one of the teleporters, it will be teleported to the other one retaining direction and movement. So I need to find a teleport? I, I don't know what you want from me. Woo! Oh. You cracked that... it. Good. Oh. The file should be downloading. I set up a database. God damn. Just look for the my file section in your communicator and you'll be redirected right away. Everything you download will be found in there. Uh, protected by a firewall, of course. Oh my god, I did that so December well. December 23rd, 2012. Sample recovery unit team lead Fisher Case reporting on subject 17, Desmond Miles. Oh my god. He's dead. The subject was deceased and unattended. Time of death was placed around zero hundred hours and seven minutes, with conditions favorable for DNA sample recovery. We had some initial concerns about interference in the vault, but given the skill and talent of this team, we were able to capture useful data. I personally retrieved the subject's backpack and extracted a number of objects of interest to undergo detailed analysis. Why do you sound like Woody Allen? The subject displayed burns to the right hand, severe enough to fuse the bones, indicating some mm. kind of spontaneous, intense burn trauma. Trauma. Honestly, we've never seen anything like it before. Head, neck, and torso <laughs> remained in good condition. He's dead. I hand-selected recovery agents to retrieve fluid samples, blood and saliva. What about the semen? It's the most important fluid of all. We then commenced material extraction and were able to preserve several exemplary samples. Data analysis and sequencing is already underway, and I'm told proceeding with exceptional ease. Thanks to the cloud database and the work of Abstergo Sample Recovery Unit 3, the legacy of Subject 17 will continue uninhibited as Sample 17. He's so dead. Desmond! Desmond. So this just like replay it? Looks December like it. Rejected. Oh, you're better at this than I'd hoped. Now zip on down to the lobby. Come on. Oh. That file you acquired? I wouldn't recommend watching it. I mean, ooh, you could, but it's unpleasant. I didn't even have a choice. Just pretend that never happened, okay? Otherwise, you'll just go to bed feeling sad. Anyway, the courier should be waiting downstairs. 
She's been here a while. I suppose it goes without saying, just because you now know how to hack all your colleagues' computers, <laughs> it doesn't mean you should. I mean, not every day, right? <laughs> no, seriously, though, that's illegal, so don't be a dick. Unless that's your nature. Oh, I'm dicking it up, baby. If I can do shit, I am doing shit. So apparently I need to find my way to the creepy little core and then just zippity doodah my way around and presto changeo hacked. Oh, I'm so hacking the shit out of every damn computer I come across. Hey, Dad. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I have this memory of you. Uh, one I keep coming back to. And I, I always think about it when I'm working or just before going to bed. Uh, because it, um, sort of calms me, I guess. Um, I was 14. I think, and, um, and and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step. Remember that? How to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I uh, gotta tell you, I thought you were just being <laughs> an asshole. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you told me you were gonna go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book. You wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited and I waited and I waited. I waited four hours before deciding to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then 10 to get down the hall. And there I was at the door and peeked into your room. And I was, I was so hoping that you'd be asleep. But no. No, you, you were still reading. And I just about shit myself. Just about? But 10 minutes later, I was just five feet away from you. That's when I remember setting my foot down, and you flinched. Ever so slightly, you, you flinched. I thought maybe I'd imagined it, but I knew you'd heard me. You, you didn't say anything. You just checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and then you kept reading. But I knew I'd failed say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. Then I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder, and you turned around, and oh, fantastic, you said, and you scooped me up, and you gave me a big hug, and I didn't say anything, but Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to scream at you. I, I failed, and you knew it, but you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. But maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. And I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. <laughs> yeah, that was so sweet and so sad and so beautiful. Wow, I wasn't expecting such a beautiful, heartwarming story about Desmond and his daddy. Seems kind of weird to me, though, that all of these random people have, <laughs> like, one singular random Desmond file on their computer. I don't know, maybe it's just me. At least they aren't too hard to hack so far.
Maybe I'm just getting lucky. Another beautiful, sad, depressing story. That's still beautiful. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the Borgia dude. That we fist fought in the Vatican or whatever. Yep. Uh, Roderick, whatever, Pope Alexander the Sixth, a cleric in Bon Vivant? I don't know. By any name, Rodrigo Borgia served as Templar Grand Master from 1476 until his death. For too long, this man of faith and passion suffered under a smear campaign at the hands of his enemy, Ezio Adatole de Farenza. Let him now be celebrated and remembered for his progressive outlook and focus on family values. Yeah, le let's not and say we did. Or let's not even bother saying we did. Let's just not. <laughs> Aww, I only have level one. I want to hack your computers. Now at least there's like finally some shit to do out here. Really. I was wondering how long it was going to take. Excuse me, I know you're busy inside Animus, but can I hack your computer? Maybe they sh show up on my map now or something? No, they do. Alrighty. Me? Was that like my little... Little earwig buddy talking shit to me? Why can't I come visit you in your beautiful office? You're all secluded from everybody. Makes me feel inferior. Bitch. But, uh, oh my god, the, the, you just popped up. So maybe there are more out here that I just have to, like, see them or something to have them pop up on my radar. Sticky Note 7. Take the cinema, which give, gave us lies, as a man once said 24 times per second per second. Take the phonograph, which preserves noises, which ought to be ephemeral. Take the ve television, which is obviously stupid. Take video games, which are secretly stupid. And you all know you wish there were m was more pornography. You know you do. Wow, that was... um. I think someone's in need of some therapy. Where the hell are these damn dead computers at? Have I been over here before? I don't believe I have. Now I kind of want to scan the area to see if I see any random ass sticky notes on anything. Because I'm not sure if I actually have to... I deliver that package myself, but I'm deep into some database coding. Well, he's going to be waiting for a while because I'm exploring, goddammit. Multiplayer. Ooh, I want to take a nap. I demand that you let me take a nap. I've been in the Animus forever, man. My ass is getting sore. That is one creepy looking bastard. Got any sticky notes around here? Well, you do, but not the right kind of sticky notes. Now you're ridiculous. Don't you call me ridiculous? You're careful now. As the data moves, there are security programs constantly monitoring the data flow. Oh shit. Sneak past them or they will destroy your data and send it back home. Um, what? I need some tutorial. Let's see. Need to transfer the data from the starting point on the left to the finishing point on the right. Oh my god, it's Frogger. <laughs> Uh, the security programs in the data streams will de destroy your data if they touch it. When data is destroyed, it is returned to its starting position. Security programs change states. They go from inactive to active. When they are inactive, in, oh, when they are in, oh, when they are, <laughs> when they are in active state, they will destroy your data. When they are in inactive state, you can move over them. Okay, so red line's bad, well, white line's good. Red, bad, white, good. When the game area edges become active, they turn red. Active edges destroy the player data. So basically, no matter what I do, I'm screwed. Um, uh, uh, um. Oh, okay, so I just have to, like, hop on over. 
Aw, oh, god damn it. <laughs> Fail already. Oh, safe spot. Oh, sweet safe spot of safeness. Oh my god, I'm almost there. So now I get to like choose which one I want to go to. Oh my god, I have to... Oh, I only had to do one. Okay, I guess that's not so bad. I thought I was going to have to do like all seven or eight or however many goddamn slots there were. I was not going to be happy about that. Creepy! I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man. I have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will. With no constraint. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. <laughs> Why have you done so? Because it is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress. Being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because a promise made to me has not been. How is he? Our three doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable, he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executioners. <laughs> Surprise. Eileen. Uh, Yesterday, Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual yeah. renderer. Bastard. And I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A, a few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If, if I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive. What the hell is happening? Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. <sighs> Miriam. Miriam, are you awake? What? Miriam, they're coming for me. Who oh, is? The guards? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. Basil, don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me. Oscar, they will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't. I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush now. If I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. It's a spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Sam, seven! Sam! You did. I am so confused. <laughs> Nick. Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your, your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic, he called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research, memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over! Damn it! Eileen, <laughs> we just talked about my mother, just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl, if he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years, and I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... 
I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just, just take care of yourself. Morning, How the hell? Eileen. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Eileen, are you all right? Sorry, yeah. I'm fine. Just a little scattered. Vidic called my ex-husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be faster using Vidic's Animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just... let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Senorian. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. Are you about to explode? Are we communicating with aliens? Wow, that played a long time after it was supposedly over. That was really bizarre. I have no idea who that chick is. Apparently she's important though. Maybe she's from the uh, Assassin's Creed Liberation game or something. Because I don't remember any Eileen. But then again, I can have quite a terrible memory. So, doesn't exactly mean a damn thing that I don't remember her from any of the other games. <laughs> 